Hello, this is Tyler White. In this video, we're gonna talk about desert EDC. First off, let's define what EDC is. EDC is everyday carry. is everyday carry that's gonna change depending on on the place that you're in if I'm in a city the EDC equipment that I either am going to carry um, or can legally carry it's gonna change from if I'm in the desert or in the backcountry so think of it this way a friend of mine uh, gave me the idea of layers okay and it just makes sense when we talk about layers the thing that you have on you first off I have the base layers, my knives, couple knives, one at least, my brains, okay, shade, the clothing that I'm wearing, which is, I'm going to call it a shelter if I'm wearing the right kind of clothes. This is baggy clothes that keeps the sun off of me. I might even go so far as wearing baggy long sleeve shirts to keep the sun off of me. Um, shorts, because the sun doesn't really hit my legs so much, it just hits my, my upper part of my body, my face. Uh, but the shorts give me the ability to breathe and the air to move. <clears throat> um, so for the desert, you're going to want loose clothes, cotton, wavy clothing, um, something if it's really extremely hot, you will want long pants and long sleeve shirt to keep the sun off you in the same way that a mitt keeps heat off of you when you reach into an oven. So if we worked our way up. We've got our knife as our base layer, our clothing as our base layer. Then we go into the next level of everyday carry and say, well, what is it that we're doing? If I'm just hanging out in the desert, this might be all that I have on me, right? This might be the base layer. I can use these knives and really, really I can do it without a knife if I'm flint napping or cracking rocks, but it just makes life substantially harder. So it's kind of this give and take. How much comfort do we want in the tools and how much, how many tools do we need based on the the lack of or surplus of our knowledge will dictate what are we going to carry because the more we know the less we need to carry right and also the more we know the more we see value in the things that we do carry as opposed to the things we don't like a rock versus a knife so having said that we started our base level we've got our knives we've got our clothes which is our, our shelter and we're essentially covering fire water shelter food communication medical right that's pretty much what, what we need in the backcountry. We also need to think, what is survival? Survivals don't die. Well, why don't we take it to a next level and, and thrive? Uh, in order to do that, we need knowledge. We need a base level. We, we like a base level of equipment, and we go from there. Okay, so if we understand the, the base level, we've got our shelter, we've got what's on us. The next step up for me, if I'm going long-term EDC, is, is something like a blanket pack. I did a video on this channel. You, you can see how to build the blanket pack. And this is going to, this is really just more shelter and more fire convenience and more cooking convenience and more water. It gives me a little bit of an ability to more comfortably stay in the backcountry a longer time. So I would consider this a long term EDC carrying item. Check out that video to see the details on the blanket pack. And for this video, we're going to get into depth a little bit more on the other items that I'll carry. If I want to go really super incredibly light, I kind of see a metal water carrying device as a requirement in the backcountry. Um, yes, you can make friction fire and cold blow a bowl and put boiling rocks and drink nasty boiled hot soupy water or you can carry one of these. Okay, This is the biggest one that they make that I can carry comfortably which gives me the ability to cook water twice in one day instead of, you know, a hundred times out of a little cup. So if we're going up in the level with EDC, I got the knife, got the clothes, and then I got a shemog with a, a canteen or a, a, a water bottle. And that gives me the ability to carry the water. Now, in the desert, unlike the jungle or some of the places back east, probably one of the most important things, in my opinion, is water having the, the ability to purify it, obtain it, and carry it with you is just super, super valuable. So even when I go backcountry running, which I would consider very ultra light, 
I will take the smaller version of this canteen in this exact setup with a knife inside of here and maybe a lighter that has a, uh, a uh, range band. I'll show you that in a minute. And that's my base level and I can wander all over into the mountains. I've got water, I've got a way to make fire. I can just build shelter from when I find um, friction fire backup if I need to, but it makes it expedient. So there's the next level of EDC, right? Is my water. The next level up from that would be the possibles bag. So let's let's see what's in the possibles bag. Possibles bag is an old, basically an old trapper type bag that they would use for flint and steel. They didn't carry as much stuff as I have in this one, but my needs are a little bit different. This is a, a bag that I bought from, I want to say Coyote Primitive. And it's just an oil canvas, which is nice because it's water resistant. It's a little more robust and it's, it's simple. It has two lids. In this top lid, I keep the primitive items that I gather, okay? Right now, I have a dog vein rope around some uh, sagebrush. We'll call this a smudge. <sighs> Smells great. A little bit, little bit old, so I'll replace this. What I use this for, personally, is hygiene. Okay, you rub your hands on it in your armpits, groin, places that you're gonna get funky, and to burn. When you burn it, it gets rid of mosquitoes. And then finally, as a bum wiping tool, right? Take three pinches of this out, go front to back, not omnidirectional, throw it away, right? And it's antimicrobial, antibacterial. There's a bunch of uses of this plant. That's why I have a bundle of it sitting right in the top. The string right here is dogbane string. I'll have another video on this channel that shows you how to make that. So reference that video. Um, I found a chunk of nappable rock that I want to use. I just threw it in there because I was hiking a weekend or two ago and threw it in there. You can do flint and steel off of this. You can nap it into an arrowhead if you want. Um, again, more information for another video. And lastly, I put some smashed up bone that I found. This is from an antelope I found. And the reason why I have this bone is because I'm going to use these bone fragments to make uh, gorge hooks. Um, you can make arrowheads out of them. There's a bunch of stuff you can make from these bone fragments and it's new-ish. I found it at a kill site where a cougar killed an antelope and anyway, just grab some of the extra bones. And then last thing I have is the ankle bone from that antelope. I found that as well. And you can use this little guy right here as the top socket for a bow drill. It's brand new so I haven't used it yet. There's no markings on it. And then usually I have a little more tinder or kindling inside of here. I will gather cambium layer material, throw it on the top, and it comes and goes. That's why it's a little dusty, but whatever, you know, just shake it out. And that way I can pull it out and use that for fire. So in the main part of my bag, I have a primary spindle and hearth board for a hand drill with some dog main rope holding it together and a secondary hearth board that I'm going to use as soon as I eat this thing up. I've already did uh, a little demonstration on that hearth board, but I like to keep those together. It's kind of like extra matches to have the extra hearth board in there. And uh, this, this hearth board is cottonwood. The spindle is goldenrod. Around here, mullen is probably the preferred spindle to use for a bow drill, I'm sorry, hand drill. But I have this chunk of cottonwood from when I got from back east. Okay, the next thing I've got is a sling. This sling is a mini hunting tool, really simple. Just hold on like that, put your rock in there, take it, spin, throw, real simple. I got that from my friend Mikhail. Um, I gotta get better at that so I can actually take rabbits out and stuff. Here's another uh, astrologous uh, joint. This one's from, it's from the wrist part of a deer, essentially. Everybody thinks this is a kneecap. It's not the kneecap. You can use a kneecap. But as you can see, that one's been burnt because I have used it on bow drills before. Now, this is not a primitive item, but when I was in the jungle in Colombia, I learned the value of a chunk of rubber tire. This is from a road bike, and if you cut little rings of that off, that's what we call a ranger band. We just use them to strap down stuff. When I hit this with the lighter, that little chunk will hold a flame for like five, 10, sometimes 15 minutes. That's super valuable when you have wet material and if you're in an emergency situation, it starts to rain, you gotta set your tarp up real quick, you're wet but you need a fire, you know, you 
split a log, pull some feather sticks out of the center of that log and put this thing on it, you'll actually have a fire. Maybe around here, grab some pinion pine pitch wood, add this to get the pitch wood started. So this, this for me is emergency fire starting. Okay, I have some primitive pitch glue. Use that to attach tips on arrows and stuff. Um, I put it in a plastic bag. I know that's not primitive either, but the reason why I do that is because this stuff melts. It gets a little bit hot and it will wreck your whole bag. Um, sometimes I have this little leather pouch I'll keep it in, but right now I've got that little bag right there for it. This is a chunk of fat wood. Fat wood or pitch wood or lighter wood or whatever you want to call it, depending on where you're at from the United States or wherever. Oh, it smells good. It is a way to, to start fire. A candle is fat or wax with a wick in the middle. That's all that this is. This is a wick with resin in the middle, so if I hit it with a lighter, it creates a flame, and I can hold that flame for a long amount of time. I can also shave chunks off, make a little feather stick pile, hit that with the lighter, or even a ferro rod, and it'll get me a, sustain, a sustainable flame. Okay, the next thing I've got in here are uh, char cloth tins have a little bit of char cloth I've made in there. This one was a little thin, this little Tabasco chocolate one. So I got an Altoids one. All you need is a metal container that will hold your plant-based material, and in this case, cotton, while you cook it in order to make char cloth. Let me show you why char cloth is valuable. Char cloth is something that we can use for a flint and steel kit. This is my flint and steel kit. I have chert and steel couple different options in there and the reason why this is valuable is if I grab some nesting material and I've got a video of this in my other uh, 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 on this channel as well just pinch it over throw some sparks and I've got an ember right there okay I don't know how well you can see that because of the light. But that is a quick fire starter and I get one ember per pinch of cotton. And then as I start to run low on this cotton, what I'm gonna do is add natural material. This duff material around here will char just fine. And then of course, my flint and steel kit is what I use to, to light that out from a primitive perspective. I've got a couple flints. I only need one, they last forever. I just had some that were given to me and threw in there. A couple rocks. I have a compass. A compass is really nice. I can find my way primitively or I can just pop this compass out and say, that's magnetic north, right there's north. Now I know where I'm going. This is a very valuable item to have. This is synthetic sinew. It's, I mean, it's unrealistic for me to be killing deer and pulling sinew out of it right on a regular basis in order to make, uh, to put a tip on an arrow or to heft a, a obsidian knife. So I have a little bundle of synthetic sinew, which is basically stringy nylon with it, it's some slickness to it and it replicates the feel and function of real sinew. Plus you can hit it with a lighter and melt it uh, to hold it steady. So that's something I've got there. Last couple items here, I've got a sharpening stone. I use this on everything. I use this on my ax, I use this on my knife in the field. It's just a DC4 falk knife in stone. Real simple, it's got a soft stone and a diamond. You can, you can touch up whatever you need in the field. A, a uh, multi-tool, that little pincher right there is very nice, especially if you're using, if you're creating snares with wire, it's really nice to have that multi-tool to pinch things off and do what you need to do. Okay, signal mirror. I put a signal mirror in an old Oakley case to keep it shiny and clean, right? But this gives me the ability, if I can get some sunlight here. Use my signal mirror just in case I need to signal someone from a distance. And I will show you in another video how to use a signal mirror. So. Check on that one. Okay, last few items I've got in here. I've got a slingshot. It's nice to have a good quality slingshot. I can take out small game with that pretty quick. I've got a emberlet ferro rod 
This guy's really nice to use. Throw some sparks out. And this is a primitive kit, but in the real world, we want, want to prevent against actual emergency. So I have a lighter, okay? A lighter with a chunk of rubber around it, which is a, a Ranger band or a, a bike tire. I can pop that off, hit with the lighter, and I've got about five, 10 minutes of fire in the form of a rubber candle that will hold the flame for me long term. And then the last stuff I have in here, I have a hook knife that I can do some spoon carving with. This one's just a little draw knife that I do some spoon carving with. This is a soft rock that I found to be good for napping. And it's got some strike surface there. So it's a little napping rock. And then I have a couple little chunks of really small antler. And that will also help me to pressure flake. And this gives me a very minimalist version of napping kit that I can keep in my bag. And then I just have a couple pieces in chunks. Here's another little antler tip. This is a fire piston. I'll show you another video how to start a fire with that guy. Just it's compression uh, that causes the fire to start. These are some leftover uh, cottonwood and sagebrush spindles from bow drills that I've had in the past. And this is a drill tip my friend Justin made for me um, so that I can put that on a hand drill or a pump drill to drill holes in small items. The very last thing in this, in this EDC is this. An atlatl setup. A friend of mine made this for me. Um, he makes better atlatls than me, so I bought one from him. So that's a little atlatl setup. You can use this to get, catch small game, rabbits when you're good. Um, if you want to put a hard pointed tip on it, and if it's legal in your state, you can hunt with them. Okay, guys. Um, all right, guys. So to, to cap all this, everything should be done in layers. You should have your base layer, which I would argue your most important EDC item is a knife. You should add to that shelter, water. You can gather food. Food's kind of important, but not really for... Food's important after three weeks. Um, and it's only really important for the first few days uh, to keep you in a good mood. You don't need food. It should be one of the last things you're looking for. So fire, water, shelter, those are the things you should look for first, food, and then go from there. And you can create fire with a knife. You can help build a shelter with a knife. You can create tools that get you food from a knife. You can do all sorts of things from a knife. So I think the base level EDC, the most important thing you should have is a knife. This is a little L2 right knife that I carry, a little hip knife that I like. It's small enough that it's not weighs, it doesn't weigh too much. It's thin enough that it's not, you know, again, weight issues. It's also thick enough that I can still baton small sticks in half with it, do feather sticks with it, that kind of thing. One attribute I really like is fixed blades. I really like a 90 degree spine so they can throw sparks. This one throws it like a dragon. Okay. And that I think should be the core of your EDC. That's where it should start and build from there. All right. Hopefully this was valuable to you. Uh, this is my version of EDC, the lower levels to the higher levels that I'll carry in the desert. Um, if you have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section below and I'll answer them as I get a chance. Please check out the other videos on this channel. Uh, I have other videos there and there's also a deep well of knowledge from other instructors that you'll find on this channel. And thank you for watching. This has been EDC for the Desert by Tyler White.